Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. I hope you're doing well today. Sorry about missing a review or any kind of content for yesterday. Uh, here I am reviewing book two of the Goosebumps Hall of Horror series. This one is called Night of the Giant Everything by R.L. Stein. Now, of course, you can tell from the title and probably the story itself if you actually read the book. This is easy to get your hands on. A lot of you guys have read this one. I heard from some people this was weaker than Claws, the first book of Hall of Horrors I just read a couple of days ago. And you're right, it is. But this is a, a shrinking person story, which I've constantly gone on record saying I'm so done with that kind of story. It's so overdone. It's been like a 1950s sci-fi idea that's been done a billion times over history of, of movies in general the last 70 years or so. I'm so sick of this storyline. And I've had this book forever, like a long time, <laughs> like since I started collecting again. And uh, I never put two and two together of Night of the Giant Everything. And I think I was assuming, okay, either the main character's going to shrink, everything's going to look giant to him because it's the word everything that's the key there, or he's going to become massive, or everything's going to become massive, like in his room or his house or his family or something like that, kind of in the vein of Monster Blood too. And uh, let me tell you, this book, for a shrinking person story, is not bad. I, I didn't hate it, if I'm being honest with you. I actually don't think this was too bad at all. I thought it was pretty fun for what it was supposed to be. It's not incredibly great, and it kind of goes in a little bit of a, a sci-fi-ish direction. Not really, not in like a, a crazy zany way like Cry of the Cat did, but like in, in just a, a very basic, simple way. There's a lot of things to talk about with this book when it comes to the setup and everything. Um, it's very involved. I don't know about that. I, I, don't, I don't really know what to, to tell you guys, but it's very involved as a story with a setup and like character stuff. There's a lot of different angles that are kind of trying to be red herrings for you to figure out why the main character shrunk. But I'll start at the beginning of the book. Basically, these books start off with the, is it the story keeper, I think is his name? I think it's his name. There's a guy that meets these kids and he's called the story keeper, yes in the Hall of Horrors. He has paintings around his rooms in the Hall of Horrors of, uh, you know, just, you know, kids who have had some horrific situations, these tales they have to tell. And each story in the beginning and in the end, kind of like in the vein of Slappy World, the story keeper will introduce us to a new kid who tells us the story of whatever happened to them. This time around, we're dealing with a kid that uh, there's a siren coming down the road. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I'm going to try to talk over it, but we'll see what happens. You'll probably hear it more than you'll hear me. Anyway, the main kid likes magic. He loves magician stuff. And I was a little worried already about taking goosebumps, mixing magician stories with uh, shrinking person stories. That's very common with my content here recently of having one of those two types of story ideas that I had to talk about. And uh, frankly, this one blended all of that very well. But he has two friends that are girls they are going to help in his, uh, <clears throat> in his performance at the talent show, or whatever it was supposed to be, uh, as his assistants. And they plan on wearing masks and stuff, but he keeps doing things to them that piss them off. For example, he hit one of them in the head in her own house by juggling, and two of the eggs smacked her in the head that he happened to be juggling. And they essentially want revenge. And uh, he also takes piano lessons, and he has this really weird dude that teaches him named Mr. I think Pinker is the name. Mr. Pinker is a weird dude. He makes cookies, and he, like, watches you deep in your soul as you eat the cookies. He, like, stares you down, makes sure you're enjoying them, makes sure you're, you're eating a bunch of them. You know, he's just so creepy and weird, dude. Uh, when I started reading this book, I was like, that, that's probably the bad guy. And I was surprised the direction the story took. There's a lot of different red herrings in here. But anyway, during the midst of the, uh, oh, by the way, his parents found a bird named Bugsy. They put out some flyers to let people know, hey, there's this missing bird. But they, they take it in as a pet already. It's kind of funny. I, I like the bird, Bugsy. Pretty cute. Um, essentially, <laughs> our main character is doing his magic show in front of his friends in the auditorium, his schoolmates and classmates and whatever. And while he's performing, the two girls pulled a prank on him that he pulls pranks on all the time. His two friends that are his assistants once again. And uh, instead of giving him, like, a glass of water or whatever it was while he's juggling or something, they gave him, like, a, a glass of something they claimed were chemicals because he immediately starts gagging and saying, like, oh, my God, you know, you've poisoned me. He gets ready to puke, all kinds of really nasty stuff like that. And then he pretty much runs all the way home. And uh, while he's there, he begins to shrink. 
And it is, uh, it, it's not good. It's not good when you start shrinking. And immediately he's naked. He has to go find, like, dolls in the house and take their clothes and wear the clothes. And I thought that was kind of clever. I've never seen that done in this kind of story. Usually the clothes shrink with the kid in these Goosebumps shrinking person stories. I thought that was pretty clever to have that. When it comes to something like this versus Why Am I Afraid, or Why I'm Afraid of Bees from the old classic series, I like both, but I think I like this more. I know that's bizarre. I know that's really bizarre coming from me as a, an anti-shrinking person stories for the rest of my life kind of guy. But I actually think I like this more than Why I'm Afraid of Bees, even though that was kind of charming. That one was more charming than this, but this one has more happening in it, I think. It's more engaging in a lot of ways, and it's easier to get your hands on. Why I'm Afraid of Bees recently had a reprint, but uh, not with a new cover and everything, too. So it comes in like a tin box, you have to pay like $35 on Amazon and Barnes & Noble for it. That's too much. But... A lot of this book is the main character trying to deal with what he's going through, being like six or eight inches tall, and that's kind of fun. It's kind of the typical things you're used to seeing, fighting giant bugs, um, trying to run across the street from your house to someone else's house, but it feels like miles and miles and miles of running to try to get there. Dodging cars like in Toy Story. A lot of the typical things you've seen, you're going to see here, just so you know. Going into the book, if you plan on reading this book for whatever reason, or if you're sick of this type of story, you might as well be ready. You're going to be dealing with a lot of the same similar things you've seen. But I will say this, there are new things you've not seen before done in this, which I thought were kind of fun and brought some kind of enjoyment to it. But a lot of it, frankly, I, I just thought it was very bland a lot of the time. Again, I like it better than Why I'm Afraid of Bees, and the, it has a little bit of small charm to it, a little bit of different stuff to it for this type of tale. But I didn't love it. I liked all the red herrings that really kind of threw you off on what direction you could be going on, why this kid shrunk. That was kind of fun. That was kind of enjoyable. But overall, it's just fine. It, it's a fine read. I didn't hate it at all. I, I actually expected a lot worse the way people talked about it in the comment section of my review for Claws, the first book of the series. But no, I actually really enjoyed this. I had a good time with it for the most part. Nothing great, but nothing bad. Nothing offensive or anything like that, so that's pretty cool. I had a good time with it for the most part as I read it today. I read a little bit yesterday before I worked that 12-hour shift. I'd never worked before at my job, which was brutal. Uh, <laughs> it was really brutal. Uh, I'm so sleepy, I can't even get my eyes really to stay open today, so I might have to go take a nap in a little bit and really kind of catch up. But it was a brutal day yesterday, nonetheless. Um, anyway... Night of the Giant Everything from Goosebumps Hall of Horrors happens to be number two, as I said. Uh, I like the book, has some cool stuff in here. Nowhere as good as Claws, the first book of the series. That's a fantastic read. That's one I'd recommend to everybody. This one I'd recommend to the fans of the Shrinking Person Tales and whatever. If you like that kind of thing, this is going to be more of your alley than mine or anybody else's that feels the way I feel about this kind of thing. But anyway, if I had to read it on a five-star basis... I'd give Night of the Giant everything, probably a 3 out of 5. Uh, it's pretty cool for the most part, but pretty typical for this type of thing, which, you know, what do you expect? You have to kind of do those things, like the running from giant bugs and whatever. You have to do that kind of thing for this kind of tale, just to set up the, the terror and whatever. It's going to be new to kids that haven't read this kind of book before or seen this kind of movie before, so it's good for them, but the rest of us who have seen this God knows how many times... Uh, it's just the same old, same old, man. Anyway, three out of five stars for me. What did you guys think of the book? I'd love to hear what you have to say down in the comment section down below. Let me know all your thoughts about this one, and hopefully you'll tune in for the next review, which is, uh, I think it's, what is it, the, the Five Masks of Dr. Scream, I think? Yeah, I actually got it. I'm, I'm a little surprised. That's actually, as a matter of fact, a special edition book, the only one in the Hall of Horror series that happens to be about 180 pages long. A um, little bit thicker, but it also happens to be the final book I have to review that my grandmother gave me before she passed away years ago. It was one of the final ones she bought me about a year or so before she passed away, as a matter of fact. So I'm really excited about that. It's going to be kind of sad, kind of bittersweet for me, kind of nostalgic. I might not be the most joyful ever in that review. Hopefully it's a really good book. It also happens to, apparently, according to the end of this book, be a Halloween story. So I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but anyway... It's kind of like a weird grandmother Goosebumps memorial video. Anyway, it's going to be a little bittersweet, as I said. But I'll try to be here tomorrow, maybe the day after, to get a review up for that. We'll see what happens. Um, the rest of this week, I should be good to keep up the typical content each day. And the next week, I'm going to try to, God willing, uh, it's going to be a busy week next week, too. <laughs> 
with a dentist appointment, some other things happening next week too. I'm going to try to get uh, a Hall of Horrors ranking video out for you guys, for the covers, for the actual books themselves, worst to best, and that's kind of my plan, pretty much, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. See you next, or not next week, see you tomorrow, hopefully, if I can get, you know, the five masks of Dr. Scream read by tomorrow, we'll see what happens, but uh, I, I doubt I'll have it ready to go, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. And uh, let me know your thoughts on this book and the series down in the comment section down below. Goodbye.